everybody and welcome to the Illustrator Creative Challenge. I'm your host, Clary, and I'm here on this day three of these wonderful challenges. But welcome in the chat. I can see so many wonderful play people joining us here. And I was saying places because uh, Delia um, just kind of caught my eyes and uh, she's ciao from Milano. Ciao, Delia. Thank you so much for joining us. Also, I can see Joe Tirmia, Rachel, Elevation, Wade Acuff in the chat helping us, sharing so many useful links. Sophia, Mallory, Anthony, Megan, Cornell, nice to see you, Mercurial, fantastic. Bruce, I want to say hi to everyone. Emma, say hi, Clady. Hi, Emma. Hi, Bruno. Nice to see you. Fantastic. So we are at day three of the Illustrator Daily Credit Challenge. For those of you who've never been here hanging out with me, my name is Clary and I'm an Italian designer based in Manchester, UK. So let's jump into our wonderful landing page to learn more about our challenges. Boom. As you can see, I'm here on uh, behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. This is the wonderful learning learning landing page for our creative challenges that's where we learn how to um, get hooked up with these challenges of course all you gotta do is simply click on this big blue button and you will receive an email to remind you it's time for a new challenge in order to sharpen your skills and learn new techniques here during adobe live now if you scroll down you can see that um, there are different challenges that get unlocked every day. As I mentioned today, we are in our third challenge. We're going to be designing a menu in Illustrator, learning how to work with text frames and columns and paragraph styles, all of this fun stuff. So for those of you who wonder how to design for print, yes, you can do it through Illustrator as well. And we're going to learn how to do it today. But something that I want to make sure to mention is that this very useful landing page has uh, some magic links. Besides the uh, big blue button at the top, we also have a get started link. Now, if you click on get started, what happens is you'll be able to um, actually join. Oops, that's actually one of the folder. You'll be able to join uh, the challenge live and follow along because I've provided a ton of files <laughs> to get started. <laughs> As you can see, I gave you already a brand, just make it easy. Um, of course, use with caution is something that I designed with my studio, Print My Soul. So, you know, if you use it, uh, make sure that you tag the studio or just don't use it for client because it's already been used. You don't want like um, an, a, 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 a logo similar to someone else, but it's definitely perfect to use it for this exercise and to publish your work on Discord and on Behance. You also have some branding assets that tell you a little bit more about the brand. We're going to go through those as well. I also provide provided a font and some text for the menu. So we can just literally, all you have to do is to open Illustrator and you can follow along. Speaking of opening Illustrator, if we go back to our landing page, you can scroll down. And if you never worked with Illustrator before, you can simply click on download, download Illustrator in order to get a trial. So you can get to work right away here with me. But let's jump into Illustrator since I say that we can just start working and see if there is any question in the chat. Batuan from Istanbul, nice to see you. Do one from uh, Seattle. Let me go back in the chat to see if there is any other question. Chris says, hi, Clady. Hi, Chris. And again, if you're watching us from um, YouTube, make sure to head on behance.net slash live so I can keep my eyes on the chat, reply to your questions in Illustrator, or maybe like, you know, if I'm going too fast, remember you can always watch uh, the replay of this challenge in order to follow along in uh, your own time. Maybe you just want to like chill with me here and then do the challenge in a second time. Fantastic. So let's get started. As you can see, uh, the file that I provided is a uh, um, just a menu is so is an A5 in the metric system and is pretty much like half of a letter size in the US. And um, you also will be able to observe this little red line, which is outside the document. This is our bleed line, which is super important when we're going to create a document for print. And let me tell you why. So I'm just going to use this block of notes. The uh, bleed area is an area outside the document that allows us to give some space to the printer. In particular, they're like three millimeters in the metric system and around like um, not 0 0.1 to 5 inches. So basically, we can extend our um, background. So let's see. Let me just peel my notes off. <laughs> uh, imagine this is the background of our document, which is pink. 
all we have to do is extend the pink outside in the bleed area just like so when our printer is going to go and trim it even if they trim it like you know not very straight we can give him some jiggle room so we don't have any ugly white edges showing up so basically we are able to prevent any issue with the trimming and the printing so whenever you are creating a file for print make sure to uh, add the bleed now the file that i provided for you which is you can use as a template already has bleed but if you want to know how to uh, add some bleed all you have to do is to press command n to open a new document making sure that you don't hide illustrator by mistake like i did and from here uh, once you click on your print intent you will be able to click on advanced button and as you can see you have uh, the bleed area just like here let me um show it here so all i did is a set a bleed of three millimeters and you're done you just you have you have the red uh, little line that appears in your document i'm gonna close this one because already we have one document and then all i have to do um so carrie said the starter file only has the option copy to your work so if you copy to your work you can do that and all you have to do is to head to your illustrator file and then head to your your work and cloud documents and you'll be able to find your file there although i'm pretty sure that you'll be able to download it um if you click on it let me just check real quick so mine says download and copy to your work so I'm not sure why yours says only copy to your work. Um, maybe Wade is going to be able to help us, but um, you can download it. Let us know in the chat if you have any issue with that. But let's jump back into our document and is now time. Oops, is now time to uh, bring up our Illustrator file. And I can see Kelly also. My dad is in the chat. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. All you have to do is to press uh, the shortcut shift command P in order to open a new document that you can uh, place into your illustrator file and as you can see I already created a folder uh, for my plant eater which is the menu that we're gonna design and uh, all you have to do is to select the text file which is the plant vegan uh, menu here it is and then click on place in order to uh, bring your text your text uh, into your illustrator file uh, you can decide if you can use the formatting or remove them i'm going to make sure that uh, they are removed i just want simple text and then click on ok as you can see the text is actually loaded into your little selector here it is it tells us also that it's just one page and all you have to do is to click and drag in order to open a text area that will contain all the text so if you don't have microsoft word if you don't have any other text software um, is absolutely fine. Jack Watson is saying that what you have to do is to go in each single individual file in order to download them. Thank you so much, Jack. Super useful. And as you can see, we have already brought in the text. Super easy. Click and drag. Don't need to open Word. No copy, no paste. Simply use the shortcut Shift Command P on a Mac. That's Shift Control P on a Windows. And by the way, let me know. Are you on a Windows or are you on a Mac? I'm super curious because I'm transitioning from Mac to Windows currently on a Mac, but I usually work on a, on a Windows lately. Otherwise, you can also go into the file menu on the top and um, leave that it was a place here, here it is, and uh, click on place. And also it tells you the little shortcut that I was mentioning before, so you can also um, use it there. Fantastic. So all you have to do here is to start styling your text. I will start by um, the name of the kind of text. So uh, all I have to do is to select the first tapas here so we have uh, one mac and one window so far let me know i'm very curious two for windows um then from the tapas once you have started uh, to select your tech text all you have to do is to head to your properties panel and scroll down until it says uh, character in order to change the character options then you can click inside the font family and select the font family of your choice i'm pretty addicted to a font called integral cf is a, a free font and then um, you can also decide the size that you want to use uh, i'm going to go quite big at the moment i'm just going to start by let's say 19 and it's also have a time to have a look at the uh, branding assets so that's something that i also provided for you uh, those are some assets that uh, i created again feel free to use it for uh, this exercise and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and select uh, the brand here and then all the shift and drag to select all these other little um 
other illustration and press Command C to copy. Go back into your menu design and I'm just gonna place them here at the top, just like so, so we have a little reference. Then I'm gonna go back and select them all and bring up my swatches panel. You can find uh, the swatches panel and any other panel under the window menu on the top. So let's choose window and then let's select swatches. Now what I wanna do here is uh, click on this little folder where it says new colored group and then make sure that you click select artwork and we can use, um, we can give it a name, we can call it plant vegan palette and then click on OK um, in order to add the color palette to your swatches. This is going to be super useful when you're going to um, use it. Here it is. I added it twice just because I was practicing, so it was already there. But here it is. So by doing so, when we are, are styling our text, and for example, we already set a family, a size, all we have to do is to go ahead and select a color. So for example, we can start by giving it this green color. And uh, then when we're done styling our text, we wanna save this style so we can quickly apply it to the rest of the food categories of our menu. So go back into your window and let's bring up the paragraph style options, which you can find under type. So window, type, and then paragraph styles here. Boom, here it is. All you have to do is to click on the little plus in order to create a new paragraph styles, then double click to start to save it and all the formatting. So I'm gonna call this one food category or food type, that's probably easier. And here it is. For now, perhaps something else that we wanna add is some spacing after. So we wanna say that the space between the tapas and the other um, text, the other um, style that comes afterwards is perhaps six point. I think that's plenty and then click, click on OK. Now, don't worry, you can always go back and change those formatting. So it's not like a committed for life. You can always come back and change them. Now let's uh, move a little bit forward and let's start by selecting the text here. So we can start to style it also. As you see in the folder, you will find a font called Bryant and uh, that's the font that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use a, a Bryant regular, which is similar to the other font. So I'm not going for a full contrast here in terms of like width, cause it's like, you know, quite wide in terms of text, but it's also like much, much thinner um, and much more rounder. So always try to find a balance in contrast when you use different families of text. So we have uh, integral CF on the top, which is a little bit more chunky, definitely a display, all caps. And then for the text, we use something that is easy to read, easy for the eye, a little bit more rounded, but thinner. So we have this contrast in between that create a little movement in your document. Fantastic. Then I'm gonna make these uh, uh, purple for now and uh, I'm gonna give it a size. I'm gonna leave 12. I think it's super readable for now. The leading, which is the space in between the size is automatically set to 14. You can decide to open up a bit if you want or leave it at 14 if you wish. Right, great. So all we have to do now, as you can see, this is the food description and then we have the actual name of the food. So we really wanna make sure that those stand out. But let's first save what we've done so far. So this was actually a, a new paragraph style that we created, so we can save it as a new paragraph style. And I'm gonna go ahead back into my paragraph style little panel and click on the plus icon and double click on the paragraph style in order to name it. So I'm gonna call this one food description. And then in this case, we can perhaps give it also some space after, maybe just like two points. And also wanna give it some tabs. As you can see, uh, we don't have any tabs yet. So I'm gonna add them later, but I would just wanna add some tab here for uh, to give some space for the, for, the, um, for the food. I'm just gonna leave it a second. I'm gonna add the tab first and then style it. So just click okay for now. And then we're gonna look into that in a second. Then all I have to do is to create an override because I said I just wanted the food name to really stick out uh, for the text because otherwise like it's just like it all looks the same. It looks like it's all a description. Um, so all I have to do in this case, we don't need to create another character style, another paragraph style because it's, you know, the, the formatting is going to be very similar. I'm just looking to change you know, few options. So in order to override and to create some changes, all you have to do is to go into your character style panel, which is usually hidden uh, behind the, the paragraph style. There it is. So just toggle between the two and make sure that you select the food name. Now let's go ahead and create a new character style. And I'm gonna call this one food name because that's the actual 
you know, name of the food on top of the description. And in this case, one of the things that I'm gonna do is to um, always have a Bryant family, but then uh, perhaps make it bold and also give it a size of, let's say, 13 for now. And I'm gonna click OK. You can also change the case, for example, all caps. I'm just gonna do it for now so you can see it. Now make sure that you apply uh, this, um, this character style in order to override the change. Here it is. So we have a nice little structure. We have first the type of the food, then we have uh, the name of the food, and then we have the description. And then again, like this looks like is another uh, food name. So all you have to do, boom, click on food name. All the changes are applied in one click. Um, so let me see if there is any question. I can see um, Carrie will do after the stream. Dan Ross cannot wait to start this one. My mom, Julie, is in the chat from Italy. Thank you so much for joining us. Carrie is Tim Mac. What's going on? Uh, am I going to say glad it's not just me? just want to see. Oh, internet issues. Absolutely. What is the bold serif font for plant? Carol, I will need to go back and find it out. Actually, maybe you'll be able to find it out into the brand, um, in the little brand um, folder that I gave you. Let me see if I can pull that out. I give you a little um, brand uh, guidance here. So maybe you'll be able to find more information about the brand in this document. Maybe yes, maybe not. Yes, the font is there. It's called ben Blenny Black. So you can find all the information. I put like together all these documents so I can give an idea on how to create um, a brand and how to follow a brand. So, you know, we also have the colors and how to use the text, which is actually very useful now to what we're gonna be doing. So, okay, once you're done with styling, um, what I'll do usually when I work in Illustrator is that I separate the text in blocks. So in this case, I have uh, my tapas. So again, all I have to do is to go back and apply the food's description and then I'll click on the food type, uh, sorry, uh, food description and then food name. So you can see because I've already created um, the styles, all I have to do is to click once and everything gets applied. Same for the names, in this case is food type and then so on. I can click and drag and select all the food description. But what I want to do here is to, first of all, make sure that my uh, make my text area larger and I'm going to click and drag over my mains and then press Command C and delete because I want to place them into a different uh, text box. So I'm going to press Command V uh, to paste them on a different block here. And again, I'm going to go ahead and click to my food description and uh, in order to apply it to all the text over here. So food description, and then you can go ahead and apply your food name to each one of the single food name. But what I want to show you here is that you can actually create, can create uh, columns in Illustrator, which is probably something that no many people knows. So I'm going to go back and bring that in here. And uh, all I have to do is to, with my text selected, go to type and then select um, Oops, I can I cannot never find <laughs> type error option. I believe that that's uh, what it's called. So um, well, I cannot find it here. So type. Oh, it looks like my um, my options have changed. I really wanted to show you. Oh, it then cutter, placeholder. I really cannot find it. It's the uh, type area options. I swear that I find it just a second ago. <laughs> That's the beauty of the live. I'm gonna actually jump back into Discord um, to show you how to do that. I was super excited about um, that find area. I don't know if it's because I get um, too excited when I'm live and I don't see things right. Special character, a special break. You'll be able to uh, to find a more option of your type. And if I have to be maybe with the type selected. No, I will definitely tell you on Discord here. Oh, convert to area type. So it needs to be an area type in order to see it, most likely. Yes, it is. So you need to convert to area type first and then go to area type options. Here they are. I'm so glad that I can show you. And then from here under columns, you can select 
two columns and click on OK. And as you can see, we actually change our area type into, um, into a two columns one. So we can actually fit it into our menu just like so. And then you can go ahead and perhaps split also the sides. And I'm going to uh, delete it for now. And I'm going to bring back the tapas on top. And you can also change between point type and area type by double clicking here on the sides of the document, just like so. So here we have our main and then we can have our type. And again, that's something really important that brought back the difference between area type and point type is that also, as you can see, now that I was trying to squeeze the frame, it actually squeezed the text. So make sure that you uh, change in between area type and uh, um, point type accordingly to what you need to do uh, with your text. Fantastic. And it looks like we are uh, moving forward with our styling. It also looks like that the text is a little bit too big. It, it, you know, the two columns don't really fit. But don't worry, as I say, you can always go back into your paragraph styles and double click on the food description, which is the one that is looking a little bit too bold. And then maybe bring down the size to 10 and click on OK. So you'll be able to actually uh, fit it. It looks like absolutely fine. It looks like it's, it's fitting just right into my document. You can also balance the two columns uh, by using your text area just like so. And here it is. All you're left to do now is to um, maybe bring the logo in and follow again the brand guidelines. So here, when you bring the background, remember to click and drag from the bleed area. And then let's select, for example, our orange color and use the shortcut command shift left bracket to bring it to the bottom, just like so. And then all you have to do is to uh, add your logo here. So we can just simply click and drag to add our logo and hold shift and drag one on the sides in order to uh, make it smaller. And we can place the logo just nicely there. Maybe we can just squeeze that even more so we can give space to our logo. Just like so, and that's how we created a first page. And then again, from our branding assets, we can uh, perhaps just grab here uh, our letter P. And for the back, we can just go ahead and place it in the middle because we saw that in the main uh, branding, that was the way of uh, the way that the brand was presenting itself. And I'm gonna make it green in this case. And again, Command Shift Left bracket to bring it to the bottom. Of course, I know that there were many details, but you know, I leave you time to finishing to styling your menu. What is important is to export your file and then share it with the word. So use the shortcut sh uh, option Command E in order to bring out the export. Uh, make sure that you select the right folder. I'm gonna choose my uh, plantitary folder in my desktop here um, and I'm gonna uh, click on choose and I probably need to change here. I'm gonna call it menu and then select export artboard and here they are ready to be exported. And then all you have to do is to uh, go into your Discord and if you don't know how to get to your Discord, you can get there from our landing page um, here at the bottom or also at the top, you have the opportunity to uh, go ahead and join the community chat. And here it is. And I'm going to give that real quick, the little link. I know I got a minute. Uh, so here it is, is bit.ly uh, bit slash AI Discord. And you will be able to uh, share your work under the feedback challenge by clicking on the little plus icon here at the bottom. And then from your folder, click on the font on the file that you created, click on open, and I'm going to call this one challenge. Oops, challenge number three and click on upload. And here you'll be able to chill it with the word and get some feedback from our amazing mentors and get it to interact with our amazing community of international designer. Don't forget also to share your work on your Behance uh, profile and uh, go back to the previous stream to learn how to create this uh, new document. You can also uh, edit it all the time in order to add more work by clicking on image. But most importantly, if you click on the settings, you can use the project tags AI creative challenge in order for us to find your work and to be displayed into the uh, challenges in the creative challenges galleries 
on Behance. I'm going to talk to you about a little bit more this part of the game tomorrow, so make sure to stay tuned. It's pretty much time to go. Again, scroll down next just below because you uh, have uh, all the entire lineup of amazing creative. I'm just going to show you so far. We're going to have logo design with uh, Sydney and much more fun throughout the day. But unfortunately, it's time for me to say goodbye. As usual, I have a blast year at Adobe Live and time goes so fast. But I'll catch you tomorrow for challenge number four. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow and submit your work on Discord and on Behance. Bye.